Hello and welcome to this Bits Box unboxing video. I'm Jamie and today I'm going to be unboxing the Punic Class Super Carrier, new release by Spartan Games for their Halo Fleet Battles game. So, we'll crack it open, see what's inside. Not quite a bit. <laughs> Should probably be a little less messy about that. So, Get a nice packet here full of tokens and such. The model in small plastic bags. We've got the usual bases. We'll look a little more detail on this stuff. So, yeah, small bag of 10 dice. That's quite handy in case you need more dice. Now, judging by the rules I've seen online for this, uh, you probably will need more dice. So, uh, that's quite nice as well to supply that. Plus, interestingly, Two separate bases, I'll just hold these up. One of them's transparent and one of them's solid resin. So, depending on your preferences, um, you can go for one or the other. I'll probably personally go for the clear acrylic. I think that might look a little bit nicer. Um, on top of that, as usual, we get a small set of uh, formation bases as well as sprues to make 12 frigates and Two marathon, no, oh, sorry, yep, two marathon class cruisers. So, a nice little addition to your fleet if uh, you're a little bit lacking on the smaller craft as well. So, pop them there. Now, the model itself, the Punic, this is Spartan's first model we've seen for Halo and resin. So, as you can see here, I'll try and get a side profile. The main body of it comes in two halves. So, there's other details here, engine compartments, we've got docking rails for the frigates underneath, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, the resin, I'm not sure if it was short too long camera, but it's quite nice detail actually, especially down the bottom here, you can see some really nice work by Spartan. Uh, there's no flash or molding issues that I can see, there's no bubbling. Uh, this is pretty solid work, I have to hand to them. I've personally never bought a Spartan product from their other line, other lines and resin, but I have heard they're very good and to be fair, they seem to look very good in person. So that's the main body of it. And then, <laughs> a little less clumsy about that. We've got the other parts as well, so I'll just pop these here. We've got presumably an engine assembly, which will fit on the back. Um, actually, there are full instructions on this, but this actually looks quite self-explanatory for uh, the construction. So that goes there. I believe I may be getting this wrong. Ah, uh, no. So that goes like that. And there's our engine assembly, free part. Uh, and uh, a small piece here. Presumably it goes somewhere, we'll work that out later. Ah, that goes in the front there. And then we have the docking rail parts. Quite a cool little feature if uh, any of you are a fan of Halo 4 onwards, where especially it's in a Spartan Ops, I believe, where the Infinity carries frigates inside itself. As is, as uh, this is an older UNSE model, this ship actually carries docking rails here to which you attach these pieces and you can carry four of your Paris class frigates under there as well as this central piece here which is mostly just for aesthetics. So that's the model itself and overall I'm quite pleased with it, it looks quite good. So we'll pop that to one side, we'll have a look at the rules pack which also contains the instructions for building it but as I said it's fairly self-explanatory, but the instructions are quite detailed, uh, as far as they need to be, only a handful of steps, and there's your Paris class frigates there, nothing on the inside. You also get the uh, original build instructions for your various UNSC and Covenant ships that have been released already in plastic. 
this is mainly just so you know how to assemble your Marathon class cruisers, which are a little bit fiddly actually if you're new to building models. The um, past class frigates are all one piece, so snip them off a sprue and a little bit of clean up and they're straight in the battle. Now, here's our overlay card. This is the first time we've seen massive elements in Halo. So each ship is made of three separate parts, the fore, mid and aft. Now interestingly, there are no rules in the box for this, but we have the standard Punic class carrier overlay. And we also have an overlay for the UNSC Trafalgar, which is a ship that currently has no rules and um, hasn't been mentioned in any rule books. There are no rules for it in this pack, but it does imply that we might get a commander or captain character who can upgrade your Punic to a special uh, UNSC ship that will be named and probably have special rules and attributes, which would be quite a nice addition later on if that's what Spartan's planning. So you can see here, these are as easy as existing formation bases. Just pull them off. I'm going to use the clear base. And then they just sit right on there. Now, there's two pegs at the aft here and one peg at the front, which are the ones that you use for actually mounting the Punic itself on the base. And on top of that, there are there is one either side, which in a lot of photos is where they've appeared to put frigates as support. Now, there are no supported rules in this box, so there is no supported Punic model you can take, which is a bit of a shame, but at the same time, um, you can put them on there for a spec, for a... Uh, uh, <laughs> stumbling over my words there, for aesthetics. If you prefer that way, I personally like it that way. It looks quite cool with two little ships supporting it, even if it's not represented in the rules. Hopefully that's something Spartan address and an update for it as well. Maybe a expansion rule set or something. It would have been nice to have it in the box, though. I will be honest with you. So, that's our two overlay cards. And then on top of that, we have the usual assortment of Marathon cruisers, supported and unsupported. Um, various kinds of Paris class arrowhead and trident formations. So these are for fielding your Paris class frigates in formations alongside it. There's enough there to make a pretty decent formation. So probably you could probably run a thousand point fleet out of the box with this. Maybe a little bit more, but you'd still need uh, additional ships if you want to run the legal. 1250 points you need for this. Now, we've got the rules card here. As you can see, each section is separated in the rules. So, we've got the fore section, mid, and aft. So, the fore section, for those of you more interested in the rules and the looks, is pretty scary. You can see there it's got two super mechs, each with 10 dice. Now, we had a little play test with these um, just Mod, just uh, paper overlays in the tables and the Supermax I can tell you at 20 dice um, are very scary mainly because of that 40 inch range and if you see when you combine the fire you get a pull of 20 dice 10 for each Supermax and the Mac totals on the Mac 3 rule there on the loadouts becomes Mac 6 which means it automatically inflicts a vulnerable marker now I had uh, my ORS heavy cruiser, which was norm is normally quite scary for UNSC to deal with. Lose two points to damage track in the first volley from the Punic, and uh, was so completely crippled from there that a handful of frigates killed afterwards. So uh, beware of this if you're a Covenant player or a UNSC player playing against it, and uh, it's definitely got punch if you're a UNSC player wanting some help. And uh, also has. 10 forward missiles, which is pretty nasty. Um, not that amazing though, I'm going to be honest. Uh, also, one thing that's worth noting, uh, this ship does not have the missile barrage rule. So when it's firing forward, you choose the target. You don't have to target the closest element. Worth pointing that out during the game. Uh, that could be quite handy for picking off weakened targets that are hiding behind uh, corvettes and the like. Um, on top of that, we've got uh, mini Mac batteries. This is the first time we've seen these. 
Not much different. Uh, they are basically small Mac guns mounted along the side in a broadside arrangement, plus missiles. Now these far port and starboards you can put a lot of decker to either side, take out uh, well, with 12 dice, put some light ships. If you uh, use Lord Hood, you can add this ship to another uh, another formation, sorry not formation, battle group. So you could combine its far for some pretty nasty firepower. And then the aft section, much less uh, armed, it's just got a small amount of missiles which can fire port, starboard or aft, so much less firepower there. You'll notice that it comes with some pretty hefty uh, damage tracks on each section and also with titanium armor 8 on each section, well, apart from the midsection which is weak here surprisingly, titanium armor 7. So that's, that's a lot of dice for Covenant to try and chew through. Now bear in mind, unlike the Covenant defense arrays, if you lose titanium armor, in the first damage track, sorry, if you take your first point of damage on the damage track, the tenure armor is lost. So a big ship could come in and do the first point of damage, and then a lot of little ships could come in and combine fire to chip away at your armor. So worth being careful for that. Uh, this ship does seem designed to work with Lord Hood, given his repairability, given his uh, ability to combine two battle groups together, because uh, this combined with something like a, uh, a Gorgon battle group would be absolutely brutal. On top of that, it gets a small amount of defense against boarding because of its labyrinthine, uh, labyrinthine rule. Effectively, that means you just take minus one on the chart when rolling for boarding. Uh, basically, the ship is so massive, so full of corridors, you have no idea where you're going, so you struggle to get to the position in order to damage it. Also, in total, it has 15 hangs, remember rightly, two in the rear, 10 in the middle, and, oh, no, 14 hangers. So two in the front as well. On top of that, carrier action free means it will keep the ships coming as they die. So you can keep a, a pretty steady stream of bombers with this thing, picking off light targets that the Super Mac is crippled, uh, or missling up what's left. Um, on top of that, so that's pretty much covering it as a ship and a carrier. We've got a few special rules which give it nice support abilities. We've got the frigate resupply rule. Uh, that allows it to remove a single damage token from a single Paris formation base within 10 inches. So that's very nice. Um, if you've got wounded Paris class frigates, you can keep them in the fight a little bit longer. And bear in mind, as it says at the bottom there, this does repair titanium armor. So I'd say with shield wall frigates, which tend to be a little more durable and a little more shooty, this can really keep them in the fight. Uh, on top of that, automated repair systems. The moment a uh, a uh, vulnerable marker is applied to a section of it on a 1 or a 2, which is statistically the same as a 4+, plus, uh, you can remove the vulnerable marker, which is pretty nice. And that is straight away, not at the end of the turn, as you would normally. So it's going to be quite hard for Covenant to get criticals through on this. And then on top of that, we have the rule for the new massive elements, where they are not allowed to be included in a list below... 1250 points, you can only have one for every 1250 points being played. And that's every full 1250 points. So if you're playing a thousand point game, no dice. Now this weighs in at a tasty 675 points. There's been a lot of debate online. Uh, this one comes in quite cheap actually compared to the CAS, which we'll be looking at in a minute. Um, I'd say it's, it's very durable but it doesn't have quite the same hanging capacity. I'd say the CAS has a little more firepower, and the most importantly, um, as a carrier, the CAS performs a bit better. It brings a bit more ships to the fray. It also has a special role where it can take six uh, fighters per interceptor wing, rather than just four like the UNSC can, or five as the Covenant would normally. So, that's the Punic. Uh, the card supplied also gives you the rules for the CAS on the other side, so I suppose you could proxy it if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that personally, but it depends on your opponent, it depends on you. Uh, it does actually give you a good chance to know your enemy, as it were, though, if you ever come across, come across one of these. But other than that, that's effectively it for the rules. No support variant, no, uh, despite the fact we have the UNSC Trafalgar. Uh, we have no rules for it, and the damage tracks, everything on the base is exactly the same. 
So it does seem that that will be tied down to a commander giving that ship to the UNSC and possibly some special rule. Maybe it gets ODSTs on board, stuff like that. Hopefully we find out soon, it'd be nice. And then on top of that, you get the usual stuff. Um, rules card for the base, the same as the one in the starter box. So you've got your boarding craft, fighters, Spartan, frigates, and then your cruisers and your epoch carrier. So, same as ever, it's been in pretty much every kit now. And then the same old tokens. You probably, if like me, you've bought the UNSC starter box and the fleet set, you've probably got too many of these to be honest, but there you go. More fighters and bombers, some more sabers and pelicans and cat down tokens, vulnerable tokens. Yeah, there's not really much to go into in this. Pretty standard. So, overall, that's the Punic. Um, I would say it definitely fits the bill of a big chunky ship. If we just uh, put it next to a Marathon class on the sprue for one reference, you can see the Marathon class shell there, which is pretty much the length of the body, is but a fraction of the Punic size. The Punic's not even the bigger of the two carriers either. So, that's the Punic unboxed. Uh, we'll have a look at the CAS next. So if you uh, want to have a look at the CAS, if you click on the link on the box, and that will take you over to the other video, and we can see what the Covenant get.